something to decipher indeed. And you've just been looking at those absolutely gorgeous birds with Brent. And now we have some poor hapless feathered creature that's been struck down in its prime. We have a very tricky case on our hands. I came upon this crime scene right in front of our tent. I think it is safe to say that whenever this poor creature met its fate, it was before the rains. How do I know that? Well, it's been raining right up until now. Plus, the feathers are completely and utterly waterlogged. And whatever it was, I'm trying to work out if it made a mess like this, the suspect made a mess like this, or if it was the wind and the weather conditions that have made our detective work that much harder to complete. So, let us start with the identity of our poor victim. What on earth has been caught and mangled here? And I'm going to show you one of the more intact pieces of this poor victim's. One very sad, very mangled feather, oh. black and white. Which leads me to conclude it was a guinea fowl. The victim was a guinea fowl. So, I've got my board over there of all of the different facts that we need to consider when solving a crime. Well, Jandre is about to go tumbling head over heels over the buffalo skull. You're right there, Jandre. <laughs> Whatever decided to do this did it in a very awkward position, did it not, Jandre? Right on top of our guy ropes that hold up the tent and stop it from blowing away. Right, so we have the identity of our poor, poor bird victim. It was a guinea fowl. It was a guinea fowl that was killed by something. And I'm trying to get the pieces of evidence and I think we actually have a very, very strong clue here. Have a look at the ends of the feathers. Tips have been broken off. So we've got a list of possible suspects. I'm going to start listing them now. Let us see if we can work out what killed the guinea fowl outside James's tent. Unless, of course, James has been playing mad scientist again and I'm just not aware of it. In which case that throws all the theories completely out of the water. Perhaps he had a dead guinea fowl that he was dissecting? Don't think so. I don't think James has been in the tent in quite a while. I don't think this is the work of mad scientist Henry, but we'll put him on the suspect list nevertheless. So he can go as suspect number one. Can I call him a mad scientist? Is he going to be offended? Nah. Mad scientist. Oh, this pen's about to die. Henry. Okay, he's suspect number one, but I'm pretty sure he has an alibi. So we might have to cross him off our list. Eagle. Owl. Cat. It sounds like eagle, owl and cat. It sounds like the beginning of some bizarre poem. Like the owl and the pussycat going to sea. Motive. Food. There can be no other motive for the death, the foul death of our poor guinea fowl. Except maybe in the case of the uh, mad scientist. Except maybe, okay, food, or possibly, good point, Jandre, good point. Food or deranged. deranged? Is that a, can we use that as a motive? We're gonna go with it. Deranged. Much like myself this morning, apparently. Deranged, question mark. I was gonna put education, but I think Jandre's word is better. Weapon, talons, oh dear. Karma's about to come back and bite me. My pen's falling apart. James has been sabotaging things. Talons, teeth. Okay, obviously I'm playing around now, but this does actually add up to something relatively valuable because it tells you a little bit about the threats that our poor guinea fowl have to face in life. Should we say Mr. or Mrs.? Sex unknown. Can't really do that. Time of death. Pre rain. That really narrows it down, does it not? Now I'm playing around. Lots of things eat guinea fowl. 
They are a relatively easy bird to catch, uh, not for a human being of course, but for the animals out here. Our, our suspect, I've put cat, that could include serval, caracal, you know, it could even have been a genet, although it would have been a very, very industrious genet to take out a guinea fowl. Cause... Do you mind? This is a murder investigation. Stop laughing at me. Just wait for the arrow marked babblers to finish their story. They know who did it. Witnesses. They're goading me. Because despite being compared to one, I don't actually speak arrow marked babbler. You did get them there, Chandra. Shh. Can you hear the sound of them coming through? Sort of. It's probably a bit faint. They are cackling away at me, hence the name arrow marked babbler. The ripped feathers, not cleanly plucked but broken off at the tips is the thing that's making me veer towards either an eagle or an owl. Uh, an eagle, it's absolutely possible. Actually eagle I probably should have just put diurnal raptor because it's not necessarily an eagle but it probably was just in terms of size. Something like an African hawk eagle, a Warburg's eagle, a Marshall eagle, all of those are possible suspects in terms of what might take out a guinea fowl. African hawk eagles have actually designed a system of the way in which they hunt as a pair. So the way that they hunt, sorry, I'm trying to figure this one out. <laughs> Completely blown off my train of thought there. Uh, the way that Aram African hawk eagles hunt is the female, or the male, one of the partners will go down low, the, others will the other one will stay high, and they'll actually work together as a team to catch something like a guinea fowl and then share it. Now, Keith, did I hear that correctly? Would a deep fryer count as a weapon? Did I hear that correctly? Chandra is shrugging his shoulders. Alice, did I hear that correctly? I did hear that. Deep fryer. Um, I suppose it could count as a weapon, but I can promise you, unless Amanda's been up to some very interesting tricks, we haven't had any deep fried guinea fowl for dinner at camp. I'll pop it on the on the weapons list, I guess. Deep fryer? How do you spell deep fryer? Is it one word? How do you spell deep? That's not how you spell <laughs> D-E-A. Is it D-E-E -E or D-E-E-P? D-E-E-P. Okay. Deep. I'm sorry. I'm so, so thrown off by the idea of a deep fryer. That's not how you spell fryer either. No, I've lost my mind. I actually usually can spell, you know, fryer yeah. rather than a fryer, <laughs> a deep, just a, a really deep fry. <laughs> fryer tuck is just really, really deep. Okay, this has really gone beyond into the realms of absurd. I'm trying really hard to hold it together, but there is, we're veering off the tracks here. We are veering so far off the tracks that this poor, poor guinea fowl is not really getting a fair investigation into its death. Fortunately, it probably didn't die for nothing. I don't know who killed our poor hapless guinea fowl, but those are the suggestions. I don't think cat, just because it's quite a messy killing, it's quite a messy crime scene. Cats tend to be quite neat. Obviously the wind has blown things around, the rain has blown things around. And unfortunately, we may never have closure Aww. on the death of our guinea fowl. All we can tell you is that the tent is as wild as it gets. This is what happens. Ouch, I've lost it. I've, lo I've completely lost my mind. This is really bizarre. This is the bizarrest thing I've ever written down. And I've... I mean, that's, that's competing with James's amazing, amazing drawings. His hippo and his wild dog, to name but a few. Right, I'm going to retire from my role as a detective because clearly I'm not cut out for this line of work. I just can't take this sort of thing seriously. I think we should go and find out how Ellie is doing and where she is, if she knows.